as the summer of documentary cinema continues, uh, we have another fashion doc, only this one I felt was a very good fashion doc. It did everything that I wanted um, the Vivian Westwood documentary to do. It actually did it, and it, it felt true to the spirit of its subject. This is Alexander McQueen. The film is called McQueen. It's uh, directed by Ian Bonhot and Peter Etigue. I hope I pronounced their names right. Um, it's about Lee, Al Lee Alexander McQueen, the um, designer behind the label Alexander McQueen. It shows his life, a little bit of his background before getting into fashion, but it shows how he started at Savile Row and then went to Italy and then eventually went to St. Martin's and then how his collection from St. Martin's went forward, etc., etc. And I actually was always a really big fan of Alexander McQueen's work. I, I love things that are whimsical and dark and strange, and obviously his, his collections were always that. And I went to, believe it or not, I went to fashion school for a hot minute um, after I graduated from undergrad, and the director of my fashion school that I went to actually went to St. Martin's at the same time as McQueen, and he worked on the first 10 collections that McQueen did. So he, he, he was very well versed in McQueen's style um, and also was inspired by St. Martin's. And so the school I went to actually um, did run, run itself very similarly to St. Martin's. Um, sometimes I regret dropping out. I love fashion. And sometimes I'm like, ugh, I can't, I can't draw a straight line. So you got to be able to draw a straight line. You can be as whimsical as you want, but you have to be able to draw a straight line. And I just can't do it. Um, so the film interviews, it uses a... Uh, archival footage of actual like 90s videotapes of like road trips and things with Alexander McQueen plus um, interviews that he did with with press at the time. Um, it also talks with people who worked with him including um, models and assistants and people who worked on his label, um, hairstylists. Um, there's like archival footage with Isabella Blow who is credited with discovering him as well as Isabella's husband. Um, and you see the trajectory of him as someone who was young and hungry and passionate into someone who broke the, broke the mold and just shot so far into the stratosphere and then got his way into working for Givenchy, like what? Um, and then he follows him as he moves from that deal to selling his label to the Gucci group and becoming, um, you know, this huge household name all the while truly just being an artist at heart. Um, you also see how the 90s club culture and people like Lee Bowery really inspired the work that he did that seemed so revolutionary in the fashion industry but was just a reflection of the culture of that time. Um, so I thought that was really done well. It was It's um, organized in five structures, five structures, five seg segments, um, his early section, and then the other four are sort of uh, eras, they're named after um, collections that he had, but there were the collections were sort of um, monumental moments in his life, and so you see these these five moments from the the Highland Rape one to his um, other very um, marquee collections. He did fourteen collections a year, but he has a handful of marquee collections, and then his final collection, um, and then how all of the aspects of his life led to him eventually committing suicide. Um, they sort of downplay a little bit the fact that Isabella Blow also committed suicide. Um, she was ill, but she, she, I was just reading about her, she, she tried seven times before she finally managed to kill herself, which is mind-boggling. Um, I liked that it showed that he had a darkness and that he had probably issues that from childhood that were not well dealt with and that the art was ther therapeutic but I liked that it didn't necessarily say all of this is why his art was so good. His art was good because he was a, a genius artist, not because he was a tortured genius artist. And I think that's always an important, um, an important difference to make. And I think the film does that well. But it also does a really good job of explaining how aspects of his life um, inspired the various uh marquee collections and I, I loved getting that sort of historical background 
Um, I really wish I had gotten to see that retrospective they did at MoMA. That seemed amazing. Um, so if, if I think it's probably a film best for people who are familiar with McQueen's work um, and who are uh, fans of fashion. I don't know that your ordinary person might not get much out of this. Um, ordinary person, non-fashion fan might not get as much out of it. But as, as a fan of his work and as a fan of, of the atmosphere that he created and as a fan of, of just the fashion industry in general and seeing the ways in which globalization really changed um, everything about the way that fashion functions, um, this documentary really fits in. And to some extent, Vivian, the Vivian Westwood one does too. And I think we'll look at several of these documentaries in the next few years as um, – not just these personal biopics of these creators, but also of um, a patchwork of a symptom of how this this industry has changed in a way that's taken it so far away from art that the artists who find themselves in it who can't quite grapple with art and commerce, where commerce is so much more important than the art at this point, um, have trouble staying focused in there in this in this career and. It's unfortunate that we, you know, there are fashion designers who, you know, I think all fashion designers are artists, but there are some who are like a slightly elevated art form of artist. And it's unfortunate that the commerce is so important. Capitalism is so important in, in our global society that an artist can't just create art. Not an artist like McQueen who chose an art form that is so embedded now in capitalism that he couldn't just make the art is is really a tragedy um I always find it hard watching sort of documentaries about suicidal people because I feel like a lot of people watching it don't know the the mindset and the feelings and and I don't know that that documentaries ever fully are able to express what that what it's like to be under that cloud all the time um, cause it's a very different way of seeing the world. It doesn't mean, and, and we, we think of, of suicidal people as being, you know, like all dressed in black and, and morbid all the time. And that's not the truth. And so then that's why we get so shocked when, when, when people we thought were like ray of sunshine commit, commit suicide. And it's like, that's cause your idea of what a suicidal person is, is not right. Um, and, and we've had so many high profile suicides in the last like 10 years that, I feel like I wish I wish we did a better job of talking about it, but that's not really a, a diss on this documentary. It's just a, a fact of, of where we're at, a fact of life. Um, so this is McQueen. It's it's playing theaters around the United States right now. Um, you should I I think it's one of the best documentaries of the year, and definitely one of the best fashion documentaries I've seen in a long time. Um, definitely check it out.